Hey everybody, James with Love My Parts, My Bridge Supply. Check us out, go to our site, see our dogs, see our products, subscribe to us, we'd appreciate that. 12 part series, I think it's actually gonna be 13 part series, but anyway, we're getting to the end of it, now we're talking about fluffies. So, pretty new stuff here. Fluffies haven't been around, well, it's interesting because our people will call me up and say, well, how did the fluffy gene ever come about? Did people use chihuahuas? What were they used to make fluffies? So I have a friend, she's a very um, knowledgeable breeder. Her name is Annette Woods. Um, hope she doesn't mention her name. Great person. Has been a source of information for me over the years. If I don't know the answer to something, then that's my person that I go to. She produced a fluffy about 10 years ago and un she sold that dog as a pet only because nobody was producing fluffies and she thought it was, you know, it was some weird mutation, which is exactly what it was. So Annette may have been one of the very first people to produce a fluffy. So how does a fluffy come about? Well, it's just a mutation. It just, you know, any of these things, like getting a, you know, you get a dog with an extra toe on its, on its, on its foot, and those things can happen. It happens to people, there's a name for it, I forget what it is, where they have six digits on a hand. It's not because they've been bred to six digit people, it's because there's a mutation that spontaneously happened. How did that mutation happen? It could be cosmic rays that, that damaged a gene, uh, it could be something in the environment that's, that's caused it, who knows? But whatever it is, it's not because somebody's necessarily been cheating, it's because that thing showed up and they then had another dog that, that showed up, they made those two dogs together and then started to produce a line of this different different genetic version of a French Bulldog, the long-haired version. So, what is the long hair? Well, you've got, and now there's a test for the long hair gene, and it comes in L1, L2, L3, and L4. Those are, so you'll get a dog, and it's, again, it is a recessive gene, so you'll either be, um, you know, if you've got the gene, it's going to be a lowercase version of that. You'll be L, L1. That is a dog that has one copy of L1. What is the difference between L1, L2, L3, L4? I have no clue. I don't think there's any difference that's meaningful in terms of coat length, color, coarseness, or anything else. I have not seen L2 and L3 ever, but they exist apparently. I've only seen L1s and L4s, and I have three fluffy dogs. And they have, some of them are L1s and some of them are L4s, and one of them is an L1, L4. Um... So I don't think that this matters, but people who are out there who probably know more about fluffies will probably chime in and tell us what the really, whether that's correct or not. So I know there's people who prefer L4s. I don't know why. I mean, I don't have an answer for this. All I can tell you is, is that there are four different versions of fluffy and they're L1 through L4. And if you're gonna have a dog that is a full fluffy dog, it is gonna have two copies of something. It could be L1, L1. It could be L4, L4 or any combination of L1s, 2s, 3s, or 4s. If you don't have to put an L1 with an L4 to get a fluffy, you just have to put an L1 with an L something to get a fluffy. Those are fluffies. And a fluffy, as a puppy, you will know you've got a fluffy because it's got long hair. And an interesting thing here that I have not seen anybody else talk about is that all three of my long-haired dogs, none of them shed. Now, I'll go cuddle up with one of my Frenchies, my regular Frenchies, and I have a t-shirt on, a black t-shirt, have a cream dog. Man, there's little hairs all over me. Doesn't happen with the fluffies. None of my three dogs shed hair. Now, I think that's really good to know. I'd like other people to comment on that, whether their fluffies shed hair, because mine don't. And I mean, they've got hair that's this long. I mean, they're hairy little buggers. Um, and, and they are such cuddly little teddy bears, especially when they're babies. So what do you do with a fluffy? Well, if you've got a fluffy dog, little L, little L, we know when we carry about the ones, twos, and threes, and you mate that to an LL, non-fluffy dog, what do you get? Well, back to good old pint square. So here's our fluffy dog, here's our non-fluffy dog, mated to a small little L's, fluffy, fluffy, so a non-fluffy mate to a fluffy, and what do you get? All fluffy carries. That's what you get. None of those dogs will be fluffy. None of them will have a long hair, but they will all have the ability of producing fluffies when they have puppies. Okay, so now you take one of those, let's take two of those dogs, and we'll take a fluffy carrier, which would be one copy of Big L, one copy of Little L, 
and make that back to the same thing. One, one copy bigger, one copy of what you get. You get a non-fluffy dog. You get a fluffy carrier. You get a fluffy carrier. And you get a full fluffy. There it is, that's the full fluffy right there. You get two fluffy carriers, one non-fluffy, two fluffy carriers, and one full fluffy. You take a fluffy carrier, and you put that with a fluffy, little L, little L, what do you get? You get a fluffy carrier, you get a full fluffy, you get a fluffy carrier, and you get a full fluffy. Half the litter of fluffies, half the litter of fluffy carriers. Um, what, what colors do fluffy carriers come in? Every color you can come up with. So, this is a totally independent gene. It's got nothing to do with any of the other genes. It's just coat fur length. It's got nothing to do with whether the dog is cream, lilac, blue, spotted, mural, platinum. It doesn't make a hoot. You can make any of those dogs long hairs. Um, and I mean, right, you know, right now, what, what, would, what would be the dog that you wished you had? I mean, if you're looking at it in terms from a financial point of view, a platinum, tan-pointed, mural, fluffy would be as of today over a hundred thousand dollar dog as crazy as that sounds and people are going to complain about this when i talk about this but look you go i mean this is the dog right here this is this is the crazy dog it's a cream dog it's a chocolate dog it's a cocoa dog it's a blue dog it is a moral dog it is a tan-pointed dog. It is a fluffy. Little L, little poor L, we'll call them L ones. I challenge you to go find that dog for money that you want to pay. That's going to be a crazy expensive dog. And by the way, that is what is called, uh, it's, it's almost homogeous in that it has two copies of everything except for this thing here. And by the way, we'd also want that dog to be KN, KN. Special dog. So there it is. That is a cream blue cocoa, which is a new shade blue dog that is a moral, has tan points, and it's a fluffy without brindle. That dog right there, sell me that dog for $50,000. I'll buy it. Gonna have to cost you a lot more than that, probably. Now, there's gonna be more of those dogs available, of course, because you know, there's a lot of people out there who would like to produce that dog. But I just want to point out that some of these dogs go for the prices of, you know, small houses. Um, so if those of you who are in the show, we don't get mad at us for doing this. But anyway, there it is. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. We're coming on now. We just ticked off. We just ticked off fluffies. And next one up is the intensity gene. Thanks, February. Bye.